Chevy Vortec V8, how to test knock sensors without taking everything apart. Quick and easy. Check it out, guys. We're working on a 2006 Cat Eye Chevy Silverado 1500 with the 4.8 Vortec V8 engine. P0327, knock sensor one, circuit, low input, bank one. Same code again, knock sensor bank two. We need to go up to the engine and find this harness and let's let's diagnose it back down and see if we can uh, trace it back down to see what the problem is. All right, so if you get lucky, you'll see on the dash, it'll say reduce power or you'll have a code. You can scan it, figure out what it is. If not, the truck's just gonna be down on power. You'll notice it when you're driving it. You gotta investigate a little further. I usually start by testing these. All right, so there's the plug right there, that blue plug. Um, I'm gonna unplug it and hook it up to a multimeter and see if these things are working. Here's how to test them while they're installed in the motor. All right, so basically I got the positive lead on one of the wires. Come back, get a reference to ground right there. And let's see how many ohms we got. We got it set to the 200 kilo ohm range. So we got 22 ohms. It's supposed to be 99 ohms to 100 ohms. And here's the other one. And that one's even worse, it's nine ohms. So these are bad. So I just use a regular multimeter for this. I set it to the range that can read up to 100,000 ohms, 100 kilo ohms, 100 K ohms, all the same thing. The closer it is to 100,000 kilo ohms, means it's good. So these new ones read from like 99 to, you know, 100k ohms. Um, if yours is closer to zero, it's more likely that the little cup is full of water because it's more connectivity because it's sitting in a bath of water. So when you go and read it, if it's close to a zero, then you know the thing's probably full of water. Closer to 100k, it's good. Somewhere in between, it's bad. You know, you get the idea. So you can tap on the engine block to test these and you'll watch it on the multimeter. It'll go up and down and um, you can see if they're good or not without having to take anything apart. That's usually what I do. Just plug the multimeter in where the harness plugs in on the back of the intake right here, the little blue connector, you can test them. If they read bad, gotta take everything apart. Whole idea is it says, oh no, the engine's knocking, cuts the fuel back, cuts the spark back to prevent it from damaging itself. You lose a lot of power, you get reduced power, truck doesn't run right, you gotta swap out the sensors. Once you do, you get all the power back, it works properly. But I've already tried everything and these are bad, bad. So basically, it's time to rip this thing apart and get them swapped out. Let's test the new ones and see how they work. What we're gonna do is test it here, 99,000 ohms. If we pretend like the engine's pinging or knocking, it's pinging, 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 pinging. You can see the ohms climb up and then they come back down. So it's pinging, pinging, and then the engine adjusts, you know, the fuel accordingly so it doesn't destroy itself and it uh, limits the power. So that's our problem. I got new ones. Um, let's go ahead and get these things swapped out. Let's test some known bad sensors out of the abandoned Chevy Avalanche engine and test them while they're in the engine. All right, so here's a knock sensor. This is the engine off of the abandoned Chevy Avalanche 5.3 Vortec V8. I dug it up out of that hole. You can see how nasty it is. It's got all that corrosion and dirt down in there. It's been sitting in water, obviously. The back one is no better. I mean, it is bad. So we're gonna test this one, see what it reads. All right, so now I got the multimeter set up on this one. We're gonna test it. If we tap on the block, you can see it should be changing. It's not doing anything, but it's reading right. If you look down in there, you see how rusty it is. You should know if you see it like that, you gotta swap it out because it's reading right, but it's gonna cause you problems. So if you find one that's all nasty like this, you gotta swap it out. See, it's changed. Even though it reads right on the multimeter, it's not even doing anything when I tap on the block. Okay, it's kind of moving, it's kind of working, but it's got a bad connection for sure. Here's to test the old ones with them removed from the truck engine. All right, so I got it hooked up to the multimeter right here. We're testing it. If we take a look at the multimeter, we can see it says 100 kilo ohms. Okay, that's good. Well, let's think again. If you look down in there, the connector's all rusty. So it might read good, but it's gonna be intermittent because it's so rusty, the connection's corroded. It's not gonna read right. 
So these sensors are obviously bad, even though they test good, right? Because if you look at the top, that connection is so corroded, you don't put things back together like that, especially when they're that rusty, just swap them out. It's obviously bad, even though it tests good with the multimeter, I'd never put something like that back together. So I'd say this knock sensor is bad and I'd swap it out because I ain't putting it back together with that rusty connection in there. If you have to take everything apart, here's how to test the knock sensor wiring harness. All right, so I got the wiring harness right here. I'm gonna show you how to test these. But first we wanna take a look at it. So you'll see right here is where it clips in the top of the knock sensor and the plastic always breaks and the connection in there gets all nasty and corroded. It doesn't read right. It's got that little rubber seal around there, but it doesn't do much. So they designed this as a rubber cup. It's supposed to fit down in there like that and seal up, but it doesn't seal well because it turns to plastic with all the heat. Then it gets condensation in there, gets water in there, and you end up with a rusted connection and a rusted knock sensor like that. You can see it's not doing its job at all. So it goes like this, comes back, and then this blue connector comes to the top of the engine just like that. Right here on the intake manifold is where it plugs in. So when you look at these, you'll see mice will chew them just like this. It won't read right. Don't have any problems with this end of the connector. That's normally fine. It's normally this wire right here. Um, it's got this foam on there to protect it from abrasion and heat. That normally does fine, but mice will chew it. And then down in here, this wire will get flimsy and get hot and it'll get damaged and brittle and weak. But the main problem, if the sensors aren't reading right, the sensors are probably bad and corroded and this connection's corroded. So this is why every time you do these knock sensors, you get a new harness because these go bad. So you get an OEM Delphi, GM Genuine, or a Dorman. That one works. I've used that. They work fine. But you always swap this out when you do knock sensors. You see why it's important to swap the harness out? They have a ton of problems to get in there, swap it out once and never have to do it again. So I got a probe on the end right there on that connection. And then I got it right here um, down the connector. You can see we got zero ohms. So this wire's good, the lead's good, but even still, you know, that corrosion in there could be intermittent, still not getting a good connection. Sometimes, you know, with the engine vibrating, it might not read right. So then we got the other one probed up here. You can see it's not reading at all because that wire is chewed, so this knock sensor is not gonna read. Even though the back one's reading, it's not gonna be able to read the front one. So you can use the regular multimeter for this, get in there, set it to the ohm setting so that you can see if there's connectivity between the ends of the wires. There's also oil seals down in there. Sometimes guys will swap those out. Then there's an oil valley gasket that goes around here. Sometimes the guys will swap that out. I don't normally unless it's leaking. All right, so that's it for the video. Just wanted to show you all how to test these knock sensors quick and easy without taking everything apart. You want to see how to replace it? Check it out up here. I have videos on how to replace it. Don't forget to drop me a huge thumbs up down below. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Check you on the next one. Later.